Um, the persistence business. Grails comes with this HSQL database, uses an in-memory version, so there was zero configuration. I didn't do anything, but I can add code to the bootstrap for startup, and I can switch to databases pretty much anything you want. That business with the has many and the belongs to, setting up the relationships, that's part of Grails object relational mapping, or GORM. It's all based on Hibernate 3. whatever the version is. You could put in your Hibernate properties. You could do one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, many-to-many. You could even build custom mappings for existing databases if you already have a database, which pretty much everybody does. What was that about mapping to existing databases? Well, if you already have an Oracle database, then Grails can map to it as, as, um, as long as Hibernate can understand it, Grails can understand it. And Hibernate can understand a lot. Life is extremely simple if your tables have a primary key called ID of type integer. If not, if you've got a, an ID, a, a primary key called something else, that's easy to fix. Um, if you've got a compound primary key, they can handle that too. I've mapped to those before. It, uh, it messes up the scaffolding, but the, the, the main model works just fine. You just have to write your own view layers. Uh, foreign keys are all in the form of other table underscore ID. They all put in a version column in the table for what they call optimistic locking so that two people trying to change the same table don't overwrite each other's changes. If we had more time, I'd go into that in detail, but it's a very uh, powerful notion and a very uh, efficient way of doing things because it doesn't actually lock any rows. Uh, existing databases, thats those requirements, that's you know a lot of requirements. So you can do things like composite keys or alternate table or column names or types. You can put in your own special join tables. GORM can, pretty, can map pretty much anything, but there may be some work involved. In the course that we run, we'll definitely take some time to do that. We'll map to, uh, what I like to map to just as a sample database is that uh, MySQL has a sample database they call Sequila. That's the name of that dolphin symbol, you know, for MySQL. But basically it has films and, and actors and stores and everything, and we, we map to that existing table, database rather. This is really what it looks like. You put in a static mapping block and say, hey, the person class has a table named people and the first column, first name column is first underscore name, et cetera. You, know, you just work your way out that way. Actually, this one isn't even necessary. Grails is smart enough to realize that if it's camel case and groovy, it's underscores in the database. It'll figure that out on its own. I showed you some of the validation steps with blank or range. There's ones like email that, and credit card, which do a, a regular expression match from the Apache uh, custom validators from, from there. It's an open source validator. You can check on uniqueness. You can put things in a list. There's a whole bunch of different validators. You also get these fi dynamic finders. In other words, all I have to do is build the domain model, and then I can write. I don't have to implement any of these queries. These queries are already available. So say I have a book class. This is taken right out of the Grails documentation. And it has titles and release dates. Well, I automatically can say book find by title. Gina stands for Groovy in Action, one of my favorite books ever. I've spent many a pleasant evening with Gina. Or I could say find by title like Groovy, where's my like clause there or release date between a start and an end, or find by title like and release date greater than. And I didn't have to write any of that. That's already, that already provided by Grails. I actually used that relatively recently. I was looking up all courses that I had taught in a given month. And when I wound up writing the query, all I said was uh, course.findby start date before and release an end date after and then put in the arguments. And it all came out just fine. Uh, I didn't get to show it, but services are these things that are used across multiple controllers and have the business logic in them and have those declarative transactions. I did actually use one in the registration service. It was the latitude longitude lookup that, that used um, Google Google's geocoder. If I had more time, I'd show it to you, but you can see it in the in the source code under the services here. There's a services domain. Here's my geocoder service. And there's no key involved or anything. This all goes to, Groovy's, uh, to Google's geocoder and builds a URL and gets back XML and parses the XML and extracts the information right at it into doubles. And you know, in about 10 lines of Groovy code, I can do that entire process. Very nice. 
the view layer is built in what they call Groovy server pages that look like JSPs, but they understand Groovy and they have lots of good libraries available. You can build your own custom tag libraries. There are hundreds of plugins available. I, for this one, I happen to use a plugin called um, Rich UI, which is what included the Google Map. I think I also used a plugin to put in an actual calendar widget rather than the drop downs for the calendar for the dates and times. Uh, so there are tons of plugins. Some of them are good, some of them are eh, not so great. I mean, they're early. A lot of them are very early in their development. Spring Security, for example, or Apache Shiro is another security example. Searchable is very great. You add that in, in one line, you can search your whole domain model. Captures and recaptures, sending off email, the court scheduling, generating RSS or Atom feeds, uh, charting, web testing, everything. Really good. How do I deploy it? I just run Grails war, I get a war file, I drop it in Tomcat, and I'm running. That's all there is to it. It's very easy. The war file is fairly large because of all the libraries, but it still runs. Lots of testing available. I have uh, test cases in my registration app, which you can have. It's all built in there. All right, so last thing I want to address here is what do you need to know in order to use this stuff? Well, Grails is a combination of Groovy and Spring and Hibernate, although the Spring and Hibernate stuff very well hidden. You will eventually need to understand something about Spring and Hibernate, but you don't really need to know it right away. You're using it, and the more you know about it later, the better off you'll be, but you don't have to know it to get started. Grails is primarily for web apps, and Groovy is based on Java. So if you're already a Java developer, hey, life is simple. You pick up some Groovy, you go into Grails, and you're ready to go. So what happens if you're not an object-oriented developer? You know, so as I said before, Grails hides enough details, so if you do things that Grail wants you to do them, you can stay productive while learning these other things. And what about the long term? Well, if you want to do Grails well, you need to learn Groovy. And understand something about web apps, that's easy. Be able to work with Java libraries, that's getting familiar with them. And get familiar with how Spring and Hibernate works. So existing Java developers have an easy path, relatively speaking. But what about Java, non-Java people? Well, you really do need to become comfortable with Java. That transition to object-oriented programming can be difficult or time-consuming for some people just because it is a conceptual change. It is a, a different feel for things. That's where the time, the hard part is going to be for most people. If you have any object-oriented background at all, though, then that will be a much easier transition for you. And of course, we have classes in all these things, as you might imagine. Here's some resources. There's the home page for Grails, the reference guide. The Groovy and Grails communities are extremely friendly and welcoming to newcomers, and I participate on the email list there. There's a user list and developer list. Uh, most of the core Groovy and Grails members are on Twitter. Here's the, some books on this. The definitive guide to Grails, of course, is definitive. And the one that's the real friendly one, this one by Dave Klein called Grails, a quick start guide, will take you and not assume you know anything will have you up and running very nicely. It's, it's a very friendly book. It just doesn't have all the answers, but it's a very easy one to read. Uh, Dave Klein's a good friend, and he's a very nice guy. Uh, I recommend it. This getting started with Grails is actually a free download. If you go to InfoQ and you search on this, you have to register, but you can download this, this book uh, and just start reading it in a PDF form. I have to mention, of course, Manning has a Grails in Action book, which is also excellent. Uh, Glenn Smith and Peter Ledbrook wrote that. And I think that's it. So I, I did go a little bit over, but I will be happy to hang out for a few minutes and answer questions that you might have. Uh, as I mentioned, these slides will all be available to you as soon as possible, and I'll also make sure that you can have that uh, registration code. So if there's anything else, uh, I, I, as I say, I'll be happy to hang around. But that's the stuff I wanted to get through uh, during the webinar.